and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to take you to the grocery store with me. I'm going to my local Walmart Super Center and I will show you how to get everything you need to make your first soaps. Um, and I'll share a couple of recipes uh, in the description box below that I used when I started with just common things that I could get at the grocery store. And I'll even show you, you can find 100% lye at Walmart too. It's not over in the cleaning section by the TP and all that in the dish soap. It's over near the automotive section, the RV stuff. They have Drano and things there. They have 100% lye. I'll show you that. I, got, I took my camera around. People were looking at me like I was crazy, but I, I filmed a little bit in the Walmart. Anyway, when I started making soap, my very first soap mold was a milk carton. These make awesome um, soap molds because they're cardboard, they're recyclable, and they have a wax lining. So you just tear this off your soap when you want to unmold, and it's awesome. I use little half and half size ones or big ones, and um, so I'll use those for soap molds. Some of the other things that I bought when I first started soaping from Walmart were this set of spatulas. Um, you don't want to use anything aluminum in soap. Aluminum and sodium hydroxide do not play well together. Stainless steel, glass, silicone, most plastics work great. So these spatulas, even though the wood handles, they can get stained and stuff, but these have been great. Um, they're super cheap at Walmart. Whisks, these are silicone covered, otherwise used stainless steel whisks. I got this at Walmart. Um, another thing I found there were this little tea strainer over in like the widget aisle, the kitchen gadget aisle. Um, and these are wonderful for putting down a mica line on top or in the middle of your soap. Um, some of the ingredients from Walmart. I, I did a video earlier, um, I bought this dried hibiscus flower powder, which is wonderful. It has lots of good skin benefits. It does not stay this gorgeous color. It goes to like a, a toasty brown color, but it's wonderful. So I'll use this in my soap. You can get uh, different herbs um, and botanicals like a turmeric powder. I'll put that in there for a color swirl. Paprika makes a wonderful color swirl. All of those you can get at your local grocery store. And I have a super basic recipe. This is not my normal soap using vegetable shortening. This is a hydrogenated, uh, Soybean oil and palm oil is what is this all vegetable. Um, and I have a recipe I'll share down below where you use a container of Crisco. This is just a generic Crisco. So that's gonna go in there. We'll just use all these things that I can find at my local grocery store. Um, the only thing I'm gonna use extra is I'm gonna use a fragrance oil because I'll be keeping this soap for family use and to give you know to my children and stuff. I won't sell this soap. But uh, I did find, and I'll show you some footage near the pharmaceutical area at my Walmart, they have a little uh, essential oil stand. And it's, they are, I don't know how quality they are, but they are 100% essential oils. So those would be appropriate to use in uh, soap also. Please do not use anything from the candle aisle. Those fragrances are not for bath and body. Um, they, they would not work. They'd cause your batter to seize. They're not approved for skin contact. So stay away from the candle aisle at your grocery store and Walmart, not for soap. <laughs> but those essential oils you could use. I even found a little two ounce bottle. I'll show you the footage of a two ounce bottle of tea tree oil and it was a pretty fair price. So all of those are good to go for soap. Um, so I'm gonna get everything pulled together and uh, I'll give the I'll talk about the ingredients as we go and uh, we will make some very basic grocery store soap okay I'm in the home section where the light bulbs and they have Drano cleaners here this is not the cleaning section at Walmart uh, and the key ingredient in soap one of them is lye and you want to make sure that it's hundred percent lye a lot of these other drain cleaners have other chemicals, don't even go there. <laughs> so make sure you get 100% lye, but for $5 you get 18 ounces. I think I'm focusing in there. Okay, we're in the oil aisle, but let's look at the specialty oils here first. Some of these are fantastic. Walnut oil is a wonderful oil in soap. Grape seed is great. Um, Avocado oil is fantastic. Uh, it's pretty reasonably priced too. And then down here is the staple. So you've got coconut oil, you have a lot of options. You can do certified organic, which is pretty fair price, 27 cents an ounce. 
basic Luann's has been a soaper staple. That's 16 cents an ounce for coconut oil, so pretty inexpensive. Then for additives here, cacao powder, I use that in my soap sometimes. It's a pretty color and it's good for your skin. Matcha powder would be really fun in soap for colorants. See, it's gone down to liquid oil. Covered the coconut oil and here we have the wall of olive oils. And you've got everything from, you know, your basic olive pomace, which is a dark color, to your light colors. So it's all just what your preference is, your price range. We've got organics here. Just a lot of options in olive oil. But that's kind of a staple. That and coconut oil are the staples in soap making. Lard. I don't work with lard personally, but it does make wonderful soap. That's very inexpensive. And I actually have a recipe for vegetable shortening that I will share with you. Uh, that's one of the first recipes I used when I started making soap. I used a can of Crisco. Well, this is the generic version, which is cheaper. The cane sugar that I add to my soap that adds bubbles. I choose the organic cane, but um, there's other options. I just like it because it's a natural sugar. And here is a fun aisle with um, natural colorants and additives. So let's see if I can get in here. Organic turmeric which is wonderful in soap, um, and you don't have to get organic. You can get a big bottle if you want to make a lot, and that's inexpensive. Another great additive is um, paprika. You can infuse this in your oils or use it as a colorant. It makes a very pretty orange color in soap. If you want to make sea salt bars or just salt bars, Himalayan is not sea salt, it's mountain region, but that is a very good price for a pound of salt, which is a wonderful additive. It's pretty on top. some rough, large crystal salt which is very pretty to sprinkle on top just for additives on the baking aisle so buttermilk powder is wonderful you've got coconut milk goat milk these are all wonderful additives here on the baking aisle and coming into fall pumpkin everybody loves a good pumpkin soap little plastic tips here too which would be wonderful for um soap piping so you get your bags and your tips and then I want to show you the sugar pearls here. Um, I wouldn't put big ginormous ones on. Somebody might be tempted to eat it and that would be really bad. But these little sugar pearls are fantastic. The only thing I would caution you is that if you steam the tops of your soaps or you cover it for gel face, the colors can bleed a little. But look at all these options. And I have used these. Um, I think they're, they're so pretty. Like if you're making soap cupcakes or anything those are wonderful these little sugar pearls and they just dissolve in water so it's totally fine okay, for soapers this is one of my favorite aisles uh, so some of the fun things you can get here are like these little tea ball strainers this one's warp dented but um for putting down mica lines and sprinkling mica and glitter on your soap those are wonderful so three dollars for one of those little guys and these measuring cups are perfect for mixing off your color swirl colors and they're very inexpensive so plastic and glass is good silicone so these little guys i use these for measuring fragrant oils glass because fragrance oils um, can have a chemical reaction with different plastics so i would recommend glass for using fragrant and essential oils also uh, let's see okay whisks are great and these are silicone coated so they're not going to react with your lye that's a good option scrubber brushes for cleanup here's some peelers for beveling the edges on your soap i use a vegetable peeler to bevel my edges okay here's some more spatulas i do use these with wood handles the wood can stain but it doesn't have a chemical reaction and they're very inexpensive for a big set and they do have food scales here i would recommend a postal scale you can get those on amazon but anything that goes um, gets very specific, like down to the half ounce or so, you could use one of these digital scales. And that's not bad, 20 bucks for a scale. This one's $15. So you'll definitely want a good scale. The tricky thing is fragrance. Um, you can do unscented. Here is their um, version of 100% natural essential oils, therapeutic grades. So, um, you might be able to use these in your soap if you wanted to do an essential oil blend. You definitely want to stay away from the candle aisle. Here is my favorite aloe vera juice. So it's $6.50 for a big gallon. It'll last a good while. 
and it's wonderful. I use it in replacement of water and it makes a fabulous soap. I don't get the flavored stuff though, just get the plain. Castor oil. So let's, sorry, six ounces for, you know, 270. Not bad. All right, so here is 100% tea tree oil. And the ingredients are, where are they? There we go. So it is what it says. So you get two ounces. Sorry about the camera. Two ounces for seven dollars. That's actually not bad. Um, then next to it here is this glycerin that you can use for lotion making. I just want to show you, since I was talking about lotion with the glycerin, here's some vitamin E oil, which is great. Um, I add that in all of my lotion recipes. So it's not the nine, that's the vitamin K back there. It's the seven dollars here for a vitamin E and it is three ounces. So that's really not bad. So I'm about to get my oils all prepped for my grocery store soap. I'm going to use this entire can of vegetable, all vegetable shortening. Um, so that'll be part of the oils. The recipe is in the description box and I'll tell you as I get there. But I just wanted to show you some of the things that I've got going on. Um, most of this stuff I'm using today is from Walmart all the way down to my little stainless steel whisks and the spatulas I'm using. Um, I got my turmeric powder for coloring and my hibiscus flower powder that I got at Walmart for coloring. I've got my cane sugar and my salt that I, I'm not going to use sodium lactate. I'm going to use just table salt for hardening the soap up. Uh, the one thing that I don't have from Walmart that I got at the dollar store, this is the Dollar General. I use these to store my bulk colloidal oats and my kale and clay and my bulk powders because it comes with this really cool little two tablespoon scoop. This was $3.50 at Dollar General. So um, this is not from Walmart, but I just wanted to show you where I got that. This, I got this at Walmart. It's a really nice KitchenAid stand, a uh, little um, handheld immersion blender is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, this is not the one I use every day. These were on sale. I got a couple. I just keep them under the table because I never want to be without my stick blender. So if the one I'm using goes down for some reason, I've got some backups. Today though, I am going to be hand stirring this soap. This has a lot of hard oils in it. It traces very quickly. And so I'm actually going to make this soap today without a blender. So I will show you how to do it from hand. And that's I get asked a lot, can you make soap without a blender? Is that possible? Yeah, how do you think they did it in the old pioneer days? You sure can. So I'll show you how today. So let me get my oils prepped and I'll come back and tell you exactly what I got going on. All right, and since I'm only using things I can get from the grocery store, I'm going to put this buttermilk powder that I found at the local Walmart in there. I'm going to put two tablespoons of buttermilk powder just to add some nice richness to this. Because for my liquid portion, I used uh, just generic distilled water is for the liquid portion with the lye. So I'm going to need a whisk because I'm not doing my stick blender today. So I'm going to whisk this in here and let it kind of fully absorb and incorporate into the oils before we move on to our lye segment of the <laughs> episode. So I've got my milk cartons that I'm going to use for my molds. I just put them in my soap mold wood container. You could prop them up with books. They don't have to be propped up, but they will, you know, warp a little with the weight of the soap. So if you can get them in, you know, a box, another cardboard box, or put some books around them to hold them steady, that'll help you when you pour the liquid in here so they don't sort of bow out. And that's just aesthetics. It doesn't hurt anything. It, it just, you know, makes for some wonky bars on the inside. So that's my little soap mold apparatus here. So I'm just waiting for my lye to cool down and we'll get get to making soap. Okay, we got everything ready to go. Got the buttermilk powder all mixed in here. Um, and because this is for my family, I did go ahead and throw a fragrance in here. But again, uh, if you're going to just strictly shop at the grocery store, go for the 100% essential oils and stay away from the candle aisle, fragrance aisle. That is not for soap. So, Oils are ready to go. What I've got going on in here is the whole can of vegetable shortening, which is 48 ounces of vegetable shortening. I have 18 ounces of coconut oil, 21 ounces of olive oil, and three ounces of castor. And I showed you all where I got that on the aisles. Uh, the castor oil was the only one that wasn't over by the food. That was in the pharmaceutical section is where you can find castor oil at the grocery store. Here's my lye, and again, I found the lye over near the automotive stuff. It's not in the cleaning aisle. It's over by the um, automotive RV stuff, the 
So I've got the lye in here with just generic distilled water, and I put a rounded tablespoon of cane sugar and a rounded tablespoon of just regular table salt before I added the lye. I dissolved that in the water and then I added the lye. Um, the salt is for the hardness and the sugar is for bubbles. So that's what that is. I'm going to hand stir this in. We're going without a stick blender today. This is a very fast moving recipe because of all the hard oils, the coconut oil and all that shortening. So it goes pretty quick. <laughs> it makes a nice soap. It really does. But um, it can trace very quickly, so we'll just hand stir. And uh, if it doesn't start to go super fast, I'll split off for our turmeric color and our hibiscus flower powder. See, it's already starting to go. Look at that. Isn't that glorious? I'm going to pull, well, I'm going to throw my whisk in here. I want to make sure it's really good and incorporated. Definitely want to get emulsification. I'm gonna just, let's just go for it. I'm gonna split off here and add a little turmeric at least. Let's get some in there. You can get so creative though, just at the grocery store in the spice aisle. Again, paprika makes a beautiful colorant. Um, different teas, you can make tea for your liquid portion or put mint tea leaves in the soap. Those are all beautiful options. Um, so you can get really creative just at the grocery store. All right, it looks like we're hanging on. So I'm going to go ahead and do my hibiscus flower, and then I'll just do an in-the-pot swirl because we've got our funky little milk carton molds. Let me get this. And of course, such a bummer. It doesn't stay this gorgeous, glorious color, but it is also very good for your skin. High in antioxidants and stuff. It's amazing. A lot of things that are antioxidant and healthy internally are also good on your skin externally. <laughs> we go. Looking good. So I just had a little bit of a panic when I first added the lye and it looks like things have settled down and we're not having a panic situation here. It's behaving pretty good. I am soaping at about 85 degrees. So nice room temperature. Yeah, I think we're hanging in here really good. And I'm just going to keep stirring these until it looks like we're getting to a trace. So, yeah, I got um, asked by several people, you know, can you even make soap without a stick blender? And I was thinking about it. I'm like, oh, wow, can you? And I'm like, wait a minute. Of course you can. <laughs> How do you think the great forefathers did it? It just takes a little longer. <laughs> I, if you try to make an all olive oil soap, like a Castile soap by hand, Oh my word, you'd be sitting there forever stirring. Can be done though. All right, I'm gonna pull out these whisks and we'll get ready to do our little in the pot swirl. Oh, these colors are gorgeous. I wish they didn't morph. I really wish these colors stayed exactly like that. But this turns into a beautiful sort of caramely brown and this turns into like a toasty brown. So I'm just going to pour in one spot for this one. And the hibiscus flower powder has a very gentle exfoliating feel to it also. The little flower bits don't fully dissolve. So there's just, it's very gentle though. It's not harsh, it's not abrasive. A little exfoliating. There we go. And now I do have extra little milk containers here too. I'm not sure how many um, I'm gonna need to fill up, so we'll just kind of go with it. But this is just a really nice all-purpose, not fancy, but just an all-purpose soap recipe. So we're just gonna fill these up, not all the way. I'm gonna go back and forth because I don't want all of one color to be in one. There we go. And I'm not going to fill these up to the little holes here, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> there we go. It looks like I might need one of my little containers here. I 
All right, so tonight I um, will put a blanket over these and let them go through gel phase. And we will test them in the morning and unmold. Probably about 24 hours we'll unmold. All right, there they are. All right, it's been a couple of days. Um, it just felt a little soft to me, so it's been about 48 hours since we poured uh, our little grocery store soaps here. And those little spots there are the hibiscus flower powder. So there's our big block. Now the question is, how do we want to cut this? Um, make triangles, I can cut it in half and make bars. So you've got options. You could cut this multiple different ways. The nice thing about the milk cartons is because of the wax liner, it just doesn't stick at all. You get nice, you know, smooth sides. So other than destroying your milk carton, it's pretty easy to unmold. So I'm going to run one of these through my log splitter just because I have one. If you are just cutting this at home um, and you don't have a soap cutter or anything specific, uh, just use a straight edged knife. Um, a nice, you know, sharp knife and a dough cutter. Have you seen those flat dough cutters or a crinkle cutter? Those work great for cutting. Uh, let me show you. Just a straight edge knife like this works great to cut soap. So, but I, I've got soap cutters, so I'm going to go ahead and just give this a try here. Run it through and see what size bars I can get. So there's the inside, and again, that's the hibiscus flower, which will make a little gentle exfoliant, but they're very pretty. And the turmeric swirl is subtle, but pretty. All right, so I'll cut this little piece by hand just to kind of show you how it feels and describe it to you. I'm going to make little, little family-sized chunks here. So it feels like cold butter is about the consistency of it. Um, and if you just go down smooth and then twist off, you don't want to pull it off because it could chunk it up, but you just twist off, you get a nice, well, pardon that, but you get a nice smooth finish on the cut end. So, yeah, I think cold butter is about what I'm feeling when I do this. So, again, just go down nice and slow and twist off, and you'll get a nice smooth cut. It's actually a smoother cut than my wire cutter. You don't get any of the bumps. It's, it's like very smooth. So if you have a steady hand, you can do a great job with a knife. I don't, I tend to like cut angle, but if you're steady and straight, you could do a wonderful job with a knife. All right, let's cut into these on the cutter here. These are some pretty massive bars. <laughs> and there they are on the inside. Very pretty, subtle, basic. Um, if you use paprika, it would have like an orange swirl. Uh, so, but with just the turmeric and the hibiscus flower powder, this is what we got. Um, uncolored, that would be gorgeous. If you use buttermilk powder or goat milk powder or any of those, it'll have like a beigey cream color to it. But these are just really nice basic bars, and I think my family will enjoy them. Yeah, it's a big bar. Let's see. I'll turn my scale on. All right, let's weigh this and see how much these are. Yeah, these are almost seven ounce bars. These are big old manly size bars. <laughs> Chunky. Which is great for family use. I think it's wonderful. Um, for little guest soaps, could cut these in half again. They'd make wonderful little guest soaps.
I figured we'd give this a lather test since I have these little end pieces. So just got some warm water here. And since I waited 48 hours to cut this, it's fully saponified. Oh, it makes a really creamy lather. That's nice. And it's buildable. Really nice. It's great soap. The, I think the buttermilk in there made it super creamy. But um, yeah, this is a fantastic, easy, inexpensive soap. If you run the math on it, with depending on what olive oils and what coconut oil you choose, um, it's, you know, it can run anywhere between 50 cents to 80 cents a bar for homemade soap for a nice big chunky bar. So um, it's very inexpensive to make and uh, it's a great bar of soap. Our fam my family is going to love this. <laughs>